So theme number six, uh, 2db604 on architectural reasoning. In, in this uh, introduction lecture, we will try to answer the question what architectural reasoning is. And as you will see, it can be several different things and you can also uh, do it in uh, several different ways. Uh, to start, we, we, I will try to, to put reasoning into a context. And the context here is, of course, architecture design. And, and we have seen this, this uh, slide in some, some variants, but, but what we have added here in, in, uh, in uh, the, uh, this, this is that we have actually uh, introduced the concern here and the ASRs as, as a, a package where you have a concern that uh, ex is specified by a number of architecture significant requirements. Um, then on this end, we have the goal of the design activity, which is a strategy uh, for, for the ASRs. Um, the responsible uh, person in the middle here is, of course, the architect. And the architect, they, he or she will, will pick up a, an ASR, uh, start to look for options. And options will... will uh, be part of the, the knowledge base architects use and it contains the experience of the architects of course but also patterns tactics reference architectures that we have looked at in, in, in previous themes and also other systems other similar systems and and well from this knowledge base the architect will select a couple of, of options and then make decisions and and there is a process here which is uh, uh, continuously evaluating the the options and the decisions with respect to the ASR so that we come up with something good enough. And what you can see here is that you have reasoning uh, at the, in various activities here, but but mainly in the options decisions uh, part here. So so uh, for instance, uh, looking for options, uh, comparing options, ranking options. Well, that requires some kind of reasoning. Should we go for this or that, etc. Also, when it comes to the decision making, uh, we need some kind of re reasoning because, well, is this uh, decision, uh, well, the best or are there alternative decisions that we can make? Uh, are there uh, options for the tactics, for instance, uh, that can, can we can use to tune uh, the the uh, system response with respect to a certain quality, etc. So reasoning is a huge part in here, and then of course it's also like the evaluation of the strategy. If the strategy is a good enough strategy, um, sometimes it could be a good enough strategy from a uh, requirements uh, point of view, but there could also be other situations, as you will see, where where uh, even though a strategy is good enough, there could be other concerns that uh, has a saying when it comes to the uh, final verdict uh, for a strategy. So uh, this was architecture reasoning in context and, and if you look at the role of reasoning, uh, well what you see here is, is more or less that you have three very different roles. One is to, to uh, identify the, the and rank the options. The second one is to, to uh, uh, put the options into a, a, a strategy that, that uh, meet the, meets the, the ASRs. And then you also have the, 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 the trade-offs where you, where you have to uh, balance uh, ASRs and, or concerns uh, to, to come up with something that is good enough. Uh, if you look at reasoning scenarios, uh, we have the evaluation of strategy fitness with respect to the ASRs. We have uh, situations where we need to reason about design options uh, and, and also well, uh, evaluate these, rank these options. And then, of course, also we need to, to reason about trade-offs. We need to identify them, and we also need to balance them. So, so in principle, you have these three. There are there are well uh, variants of these, but but these are the the, the main ones. Uh, 
so what's important here is that well reasoning is the intellectual activity of a, a, a design process. It's where where you design your 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 architecture. Um, and, and the architecture, well, it comes from uh, the, the ASRs you have here. And, and uh, well, part of developing a candidate, well, you need to identify and compare the options. You have to manage trade-offs. And then when you think that you have a, a complete candidate strategy, well, you can go over to this stage where you evaluate the strategy to make sure that it, it meets the, the, the goals of the, the, the ASR. Uh, and then you repeat this until you have managed all the ASRs for a concern and you come up with a good enough strategy. And that means that you can, you can well, finally leave this desert road uh, because sometimes it feels like that when, when you design uh, your architecture. Uh, one thing that is important in uh, uh, the uh, um, design process is that you have to, to think in two dimensions. Uh, uh, well, you have your concerns that the stakeholders come up with. You need to repeat your design effort for all stakeholders, for all their concerns and all the ASRs you identify for, for the concerns. So, so you need to iterate. But, but there's also an incremental dimension, which means that you, you pick and choose uh, design uh, or arch uh, architecture uh, tactics, patterns, references, reference architectures, etc., to form your your strategies, and and designing your strategies for the ASR, so the concerns to meet the the, the stakeholders' concerns. Well, it, you can do that in many different ways. Uh, for instance, in the book, they they propose one approach where you where you design a strategy for a single quality attribute, and then you you try to integrate and consolidate. Uh, with uh, other strategies for other uh, quality attributes. An alternative is, of course, that you, you cut the, the increments uh, differently. So, so uh, you, you uh, have uh, several uh, quality attributes that, that grow incrementally over uh, several iterations. Um, I believe that uh, that, ap that approach is, is a little bit more complex to manage, but, but I think that in most case it you, cases you will end up with something that is uh, uh, slightly better than, than the alternative. So in the book they, they advocate this attribute-driven design. Uh, and what they, what they do there is, is that they really focus on quality attributes and how they drive the architecture design. So here ADD defines a software architecture, architecture uh, based on a decomposition that is driven by the quality attributes the system should meet. So, so the starting point is the quality attributes. And it means that the input is a set of requirements. Okay, sure, and that's not unique for ADD, but but they have functional requirements, they have constraints and quality requirements. We have been through these uh, in, in one of the previous themes. Um, ADD is recursive, which means that in each uh, iteration, uh, the architects uh, choose from, from tactics and patterns to form a strategy for a set of quality attribute scenarios. And, and recursively decompose, uh, recursively add, bring in more qualities. Well, at the end of the day, the output of the ADD is, is several views that uh, uh, pr uh, gives a comprehensive uh, uh, perspective on, on uh, how uh, quality is achieved uh, in, in the system you, you have designed. So, uh, to, to put the two things in, in, in together, well, you have the 
activities here, the uh, to a large extent driven by by reasoning in the design process, where you uh, you can uh, model specify your ASRs and then start to look for your um, design options, evaluate them, rank them. Uh, start to, to put the architectural ele elements together in, in different models. Uh, and then, well, while doing that, you need to reason about the actual design. And, and uh, well, when you have something, you get a strategy, and this strategy can be evaluated. And eventually, when you have a good enough strategy, you can, you can uh, put the models you have together uh, into uh, a view. So, um, as, you will, as you see, the, the processes we have discussed, the, the activities and, and artifacts, they are to a large extent uh, overlapping with the ADD uh, uh, process. So, what's important now is, is that, okay, we focus to a large extent on reasoning, but, but reasoning uh, is not just about identifying. Uh, it's uh, actually leaning more towards uh, evaluation. And uh, evaluation, uh, the fitness of a strategy with respect to the ASRs is, is, is of course, very important. Uh, but also when you, when you find uh, design options, you need to, to, to uh, come up with some, some evidence for your claims about which one to, uh, of the options you should use, etc. Um, and the same is also true for, for uh, trade-offs, because a trade-off means that, that you uh, trade quality for some, one quality for some other quality, and, and you need to, to, to make those decisions into, uh, as informed decisions, so you need some understanding about what the con consequences will be if you go for one decision or another. And it means that evaluation is also an, an important part here. So architecture evaluation, uh, there are many different ways to, 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 to do this. And, and in this uh, slide, I, I tried to illustrate that, that you have uh, three levels of, of formality uh, and and uh, you have argumentation techniques, which is is a technique that you can use together with stakeholders. For instance, you they are not trained in in specific qualities like security or performance. So so for them, often you have to 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 well put yourself in their position, and you can use quality attribute scenarios and walkthroughs. Uh, uh, well. For instance, the, the ATAM um, uh, evaluation model is, is, is one uh, example where scenarios and walkthroughs are used. Um, if we climb the, the formality scale, you will come to validation. And validation, well, you can, you can develop a demonstrator. You can uh, perform an architectural spike, develop a, a demonstrator, uh, and use that demonstrator to communicate with your your uh, your uh, stakeholders uh, or you can you can use other types of, of executable uh, models for 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 validating uh, the the architecture's response with respect to some some stimuli uh, the highest degree of 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 uh, Evaluation is, of course, a verification where you verify uh, the system for certain prof properties. So you can use mathematical proofs or you can use other types of analytical models where, where you can, via calculations, uh, end up with results that, that uh, support uh, your claims with respect to, to some quality. For instance, you can create a, a performance model uh, for a system. Uh, When it comes to, to uh, uh, trade-offs, uh, the fact that uh, we have trade-offs uh, uh, where, where we have several, one or more qualities that, that compete for some, some, some 
often resources uh, in the system, uh, you have to sacrifice something to get something else. Uh, there is a challenge here, and that is to, to uh, especially if you use this uh, incremental iterative approach where you design a strategy for, for a single attribute, uh, and, and then you move on and you bring up the next attribute and, and, and design for that. Uh, then in the consolidation phase, you will run into these uh, challenges where, where uh, you have competition and then you need to ad identify and, 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 and balance uh, these two or more uh, attributes in a way that you, you end up with something that is, that is good enough. So... Uh, to wrap things up, what we can say is that we have architectural reasoning uh, throughout the design process. We use it when we, we uh, uh, pick and choose among the, the design options uh, when developing a candidate. Uh, we also uh, use it to, to, to identify and balance out the, the trade-offs. Uh, and last but not least, when we have a, a strategy candidate, we, we do the evaluation of that. Uh, and as you saw, we can do evaluation at, in different ways. We can do it by argumentation, we can do it through validation or verification. Uh, different types, uh, also different uh, strength in the support for the claims we made. Okay, so, so now it's time to, to move on to the second lecture, which is an example where we continue with the Jed's rental and, and look at reasoning uh, for that case.